I know that many of you have done the typical, um, ah, now I can't think of what it's called. Pinwheel, pinwheel. Gosh, I almost lost that. I know a lot of you have done the typical pinwheel, and I know we've done it here in Patches and Pieces a while back, I think. I call this block a shining star. Um, when we think of stars in quilting, we typically think about kind of like the Ohio star, things like that. But when I think of stars, I think of space. And you all know I'm a little space nutty, right? I've been like following the Mars thing forever. Um, and a lot recently. So when I think of stars, I think of space and I think of how, you know, they're spinning and they're sending out their light like our sun does, right? So I took this idea of a pinwheel, but I changed it a little bit and I call it a shining star. So let me show you it. Let's get my phone out of the way there. Okay. So there we go. So I call it a shining star. And I'm going to talk to you today about how to do this and then how to scale it up or down. This is the exact same pattern, but this piece measures, this whole square is two and a half inches when it's done. So quite a bit different. But I'm going to give you a little formula to help you remember how to scale up and scale down on your blocks that require um, quarter square triangles and half square triangles. So this is our shining star. And really it is made um, simply from half square triangles and a solid block. So for this, you need three fabrics. Um, kind of for your half square, maybe a light and a dark or something that is complementary um, or coordinates. Uh, coordinates. Um, like in here, I've got the colors that are in these are also in these. Um, these are all tulip pink, by the way. Um, so in this confetti, it's got all the little colors. And over here in the hexagons, all those little colors are within the hexagons. And then they kind of all match in here. And I will tell you this, that all three of these are from different Tula uh, collections. And that's one reason I love her is all of her collections can kind of mix and match. So you're gonna need two squares for your half square triangle and a square um, for making the uh, modified quarter square triangle. So we're going to start with two squares that are five and a quarter inches. Okay. And we're just going to lay them on top of one another, right sides together and make a half square triangle out of them or make two half square triangles. Let me get mine lined up here. There we go. And I'm going to use my little marking tool to mark my sewing lines. Now I've talked about using this template ruler before, but I will repeat again that if you don't have this kind of a template ruler, no problem. Just make yourself a line with any ruler from diagonal point to diagonal point, and then stitch a quarter inch on each side of that center line. That center line will be the line where you eventually cut these apart. Um, so I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew around and we're going to make our half square triangles. Let's see. There we go. And with, I just use a regular 2.5 stitch length an 8012 Microtex needle, and I use 100% cotton thread. Um, I prefer Aurifil, but you can use whatever cotton thread you like. Come around, I'm gonna sew down. Oh, 
Okay. So from these two squares, we're going to get two half square triangles. And that's what we need to make our four modified quarter square triangles. Now, if any of you are in the, um, if any of you are in my mystery quilt along for 2021, you'll recognize the modified quarter square triangle. This is not the same pattern um, from the mystery quilt along, but how to do this, um, make this modified quarter square is. So let me put my camera back. All right, so now we're, we have our sewing down and each of the lines. So I'm gonna line up here. I'm gonna just use typical 45 millimeter rotary cutter. And now I have two half square triangles. And when I flip them and press them, I'll have two that look just like that. This one was <laughs> previously done. So see, you have two of them that look just like that. Then what you wanna do is take your third color. Now you'll need two of these squares and these squares are going to be so, these two that we started with here were five and a quarter inches. The two that make up your third fabric are going to be four and seven eighths inches. Okay, That's part of the formula that I'll share with you here at the end. So we're just going to leave our half square triangle laying down and put whatever your darkest color is in the upper corner. So it's the upper half of your half square triangle. And then take your other block, your solid, just lay it flat on top of that. Now we're going to make another half square triangle. So, which will actually turn out to be our modified quarter square triangles. So, whoops, my mark didn't. For some reason it must be, must be the left-handedness. So I'm gonna go and sew these. And when you sew these, I want you to make sure that when you lay these down and you sew them, so my lines are going from the upper right to the bottom left. And that is because if I flip this back, there's my seam on my half square triangle. So the seam on the half square triangle is now going from the upper left to the bottom right. And I don't want to sew in the same direction as that seam, I wanna sew across it. So you do, you just have to be a little bit careful when you're lining up your, um, your two squares for this part that you get them going um, in those technically, I guess, an opposite direction. Flip it around. Okay. Clip all of my little threads here. Uh, yes, Zoe, I'm sure that you thought it was still a fabric. Um, okay, so here we go again. We're just going to line this up with our template, corner to corner. So if you've made your solid line here and sewn on each side of it, you will line up on that line corner to corner diagonally, cut it in half. And when we open it up, we have our modified quarter square triangle. Let me just bring my pressing sheet over here a little bit. 
I'm going to condition my seam. And let me grab my if you have your it helps if you have your iron turned on i had it turned on all morning and then i turned it off that conditioner lays it so flat you would never know i didn't actually iron um i had it on all morning while i was working and i turned it off at lunchtime so it just wouldn't just sit there and stay hot and i forgot to turn it back on let's see probably press that one more time there we go So there's one, here's our second one. And I'm going to put this thread here. And flip it and press it. And I'm gonna trim off my little dog ears. So you'll end up with four of these because you start out with your two half square triangles. And when you lay your third color on this set and then on this set, you end up with four modified quarter square triangles. And a modified quarter square triangle is simply this. Half of it looks like a half square triangle. Half of it looks like a quarter square triangle. Technically, you've made another half square triangle, but half of it is looks like a quarter square triangle. Pretty simple. And you know, I've talked before about the idea that um, half square triangles, quarter square triangles, two of the foundational blocks in piecing for quilts. I would say this one, the modified quarter square, is really a foundational type as well. Um, you can use this a lot, depending on how you were to put your pieces together. Like if you put them together like that in rows, you could have stripes going through your piece. Um, so here, let me bring this up a little bit and I'll show you what it would look like if I just did these in rows. So if I just did this modified quarter square triangle in rows, I would end up with diagonal stripes that look like this and then solids and then this and then solids. That would be a kind of a cool look and you could do kind of a stripped uh, row by row type of a quilt. But what we're going to do is place them together to make our shining star. So the upper left block is going to have the quarter square half in the bottom left. The one right next to it here is going to have the quarter square in the upper left. Over here in the bottom right hand corner, we're going to have the quarter square in the upper right. And over here, we're going to have the quarter square in the bottom right. Okay. And that gives you your shining star. And then all you do is fold these two together. And these two together, use a quarter inch for your seam allowance. Once you have them together, just put them together like this and do another quarter inch seam and then give it a good press. Trim it up if you want. These blocks, when they're done, these individual modified quarter squares should come out to be four and a half inches. And that's part of the little piece that I'm going to tell you about here in just a second for adjusting your sizes if you want to make a bigger square or a smaller square. So you end up with our block like this. Now you could just go ahead and sew a bunch of these blocks together. That would be fine. Or you could do borders around them. Um, anything you want. So you could put them together in any way that you, you wanted. 
But let's talk about our little one here, because I know some of you are going to say, why in the world would you make such a tiny block? Well, in all honesty, you would not see me making tiny blocks very often, because I'm horrible at this tiny, uh, these tiny, I call these micro uh, quilts, because they're so small. And if you can see right here, even my cut right there is even off. I'm going to have to trim that up. But the reason I wanted to show you this is this is made exactly the same way as this is. I just use smaller blocks. So here is the kind of formula for you to do anything you want with your blocks. Your two blocks, let's just look at our, our modified quarter square. The two blocks that make up your half square triangles that become your quarter square triangles, so those two. Each of these needs to be a whole number and a quarter. So we started out with these, they were five and a quarter. When I did this one, these little guys were two and a quarter. So I just went down a couple of inches, added my quarter on, okay? This one that starts out as a solid, it needs to start out at the number. So I should have done like a, I'll do a little, um, I'll do a little uh, ch cheat for you and I'll post it um, at Heartfelt Creative with Diana. And then you can just print it off, but I'll go with, I'll go through it quickly. So this is like five and a quarter. This one needs to be one whole number less than this plus seven eighths. So five. Minus one is four. So this is four and seven eighths. Five and a quarter minus five minus one is four. Add seven eighths. So five and a quarter for each of these. Se uh, four and seven eighths for this one. So on these little guys here, these were two and a quarter. Two minus one is one. These solid blocks I used here were one and seven eighths inches. And then when you put them together to make your new modified quarter square triangles, this whole piece ends up being the same number as this. So four on this one plus a half, so four and a half inches. And those of you that do a lot of quilting know all that we're doing there is starting out with a piece and taking a quarter inch off each time we make it into the next part of the block. So five and a quarter, four and seven eighths to four and a half. And that's because we have our seams there and there. Okay, and each one of those seams is a quarter inch. So on this little guy here, when I was done with it, he ended up being two and a half inches total. So you can, up or down your, and this final finished block size, you can, I mean, if you want to make this oversized and then cut this down to say a three and a half inch block, you can certainly do that when you square up. So that final and a half part of your total here is not as important. Um, what's important is that you start out with these two being a whole number plus a quarter, and this one being one whole number less than this plus seven eighths. Five and a quarter, five minus one is four, four and seven eighths. I hope that makes sense. I'll do a little cheat sheet and put it out, like I said, on Heartfelt Creative with Diana. And that will help you. That'll give you a little worksheet where you can fill in your numbers if you need to when you're doing it. Um, let's go back to our little guy and then we're almost done here. Why would we want tiny squares like this, right? do all that piecing for something so tiny. There, there is such a thing as micro quilting where your whole quilts end up being no more than a six inch block. Some of them I've seen are smaller. And so doing something to practice some smaller quilting sometimes can be helpful if you want to start doing micro quilts. The other thing you can do with this, if you did a bunch of these, and sewed them together, you would have a two and a half inch strip of these uh, in width, and you, you could use them for a border, a lovely border or sashing 
or let's say Let's pretend this whole block is one color. Like this is a solid and this is a solid and this is a solid piece, okay? And then we put that in the bottom corner or this bottom corner or an upper corner. So you would have three solids and that. And so every now and again, in what would look overall like a solid quilt, you'd have these tiny little piece blocks. It would be a cute idea. So it's really easy to um, change your um, quilt block sizes when you just remember that basically all you're doing is adding and subtracting that quarter inch, okay? So I'll put that uh, piece out at Heartfelt Creative with Diana. And um, I'll also put a link um, because this instructional part of this video will go on YouTube today and I'll put a link for it there as well. Alrighty, so let me 